which we're extremely excited. We're so thrilled and honored because we have the privilege of having partnered with Multicultural Council Ambassadors, which is an extremely strategic leadership group of volunteers from ethnic communities around the, around the Toronto area. So with the Multicultural Ambassadors, we're partnering with this first annual tournament, of which we're so pr thrilled to announce that Brooke Henderson, one of Canada's rising stars in the golf, uh, professional golf tournament routes, are, has, is coming to our event. And so Brooke will be with us. She'll be doing a golf clinic, and she'll also be, um, she'll be golfing with several foursomes. A little bit about World Vision. We are Canada's largest NGO within the development, international development world. And one thing about this tournament is that we're raising funds and we're creating awareness through this tournament about disaster preparedness around the world. Many countries face challenging disasters, natural disasters that are unanticipated and they cause significant amount of damage. Uh, world Vision is a country that's placed throughout the globe and we're always one of the first NGOs on the ground when disaster, a disaster occurs and so we're there to be able to help and with our multicultural partners uh, we have chosen this particular area uh, for which the tournament will be raising funds and so we're excited about this new launch and this new venture within the Canadian charitable space Again, we're so grateful for our partners and we're grateful for the support of the community that we actually will have Brooke joining us. So with that introduction mm -hmm. about World Vision and the tournament, which will happen on June 23rd, which is a Friday, just several weeks from now, here at Angus, Angus Glen, we have uh, the tournament and a beautiful dinner afterwards. I am now extremely pleased to enjoy Thank you very much, and uh, thank you, World Vision, to be able to partner with us as multicultural uh, ambassadors for this uh, great occasion. Usually when a disaster happens, we're looking for funds after the fact. This time we're anticipating that, and we're really pleased that we can work with the World Vision to have this golf tournament. Um, the multicultural uh, community, the multicultural group, it is a way of bridging with Canadians and children and to make sure that you know, we have these resources available. But let me introduce us some of them. Uh, Doa is uh, one of the multicultural. Iqbal, <laughs> Caroline are all here to support that. And uh, uh, without their help, we wouldn't be able to uh, get all the sponsors we need. So I thank all the sponsors. I thank World Vision. And I hopefully we're going to have a full participation on that. So if you haven't signed up, please do sign up. There are a few vacancies left to be able to play, and I look forward to June the 23rd and this golf tournament. Thank you very much. I work with World Vision Canada, and I'm the director for our humanitarian and emergency affairs team. So I am very excited that this event is happening, and, and as Joe said, it is so important for us to be able to respond quickly um, when a disaster strikes, and the resources that are going to be raised through this event um, are going to enable us to do this. As Jenna said, World Vision is the first in and the last out um, during emergencies and humanitarian crises overseas. Due to our long-term development work and the presence that we already have working with local communities and government partners on the ground, enables us to respond quickly with life-saving emergency aid, and we continue to help families long-term to rebuild. We know that children are disproportionately affected by shocks and disasters. Over half a billion children live in zones of extreme flood. Nearly 160 million children live in areas of high drought severity. And more than a billion children live in conflict-affected areas. Many of the countries deemed most vulnerable to climate change are also among the fastest urbanizing. And that's certainly the case in many of the countries in Asia that we see today. The physical, economic, and psychological impacts of disaster-related shocks exacerbate existing inequalities between children in nutrition, health, and long-term achievements. Through World Vision's disaster preparedness work, we empower communities to anticipate and prepare for future emergencies, to save lives, to save more lives, and to minimize adverse impact. With access to knowledge and skills development, we know that children can contribute to disaster risk reduction in their communities and help to build community resilience. So in 2016 alone, 
Over 86,000 people, including children, benefited from World Vision's emergency preparedness projects. These were supported by Canadians, and are, these children are now better equipped to protect themselves from disasters and respond to emergencies. Our goal with these kinds of programs is really to help empower children, communities, and institutions to reduce vulnerabilities to disaster, and also to lessen the impact that a potential disaster may have. To do this, World Vision works with children, families, individuals, as well as local, national, and even international partners across the globe. We do this working with community leadership, with schools, with governments, to ensure that hazards are identified so that children and families know what risks they may face. This is something that we've even been talking about recently in, in Ontario and Quebec with the massive floodings that have happened. We, we need to know which, which houses, where, which schools are going to be at risk. And once we have that knowledge, we can help communities to prepare for that, to put mitigation measures into place, and to prepare for a potential disaster to happen. We do things like help communities to, to ensure that earthquake resistant building codes are, are put into place, that evacuation centers are established and equipped, and that weather information systems are available. Uh, we also empower families with things like cash transfers and savings groups, as well as microfinance to help families during times of hardship and to support faster recovery. So in addition to helping communities prepare for disasters, we also um, ensure that communities are ready to respond. We train local volunteers, we work in coordination with governments to make sure that response can be quick. So looking ahead, Rural Vision is committed to reaching at least 20% of all affected children when we respond to a natural disaster through prioritizing child protection and education services and ensuring that we empower children and youth to be agents of change within their communities to help address violence against children. We can't do any of this, however, without the generous support of Canadian donors. And we thank you so much for your ongoing generosity and for your participation um, in this exciting golf tournament uh, to help us reach the most vulnerable children in our world. Thank you. Good afternoon. I'm Edgar Gonzalez, and uh, I'm a multicultural philanthropy advisor at the uh, World Vision Canada, part of the Vision Partners team. When we started this whole idea of multicultural council, that was exactly a year ago, if you remember that. We brought all of you guys exactly 12 months ago and uh, introduced you to the leadership and you met a lot of them. And it was such a big dream. And looking at all of you guys this afternoon with all our guests from the press, from our internal stakeholders, you know, I can't help but really, I'm so happy to see everybody you know, and uh, with this big task ahead of us, I have no doubt in my mind that we can all pull this together. But before anything else, let me thank our internal partners, Marie, Jen, and Gord. I think they deserve a big round of applause. <laughs> and thank you and also Lindsay from our programs. Mm -hmm. Give a round of applause to Lindsay. Thank you so much. And uh, I'm here to just briefly uh, also mentioned that we have actually invited uh, a lot of sponsors and uh, supporters on board. I just wanted to mention them uh, briefly, if you may allow me. Yeah. So uh, we have the following as our sponsors today. By the way, if you have, you know, any potential sponsors or uh, supporters in mind, please uh, feel free to approach us and we'll be happy to talk about that uh, all the more. So we have uh, PNB, Philippine National Bank, supporting us, North American Private Asset Score, GBK, and represented by no less than Caroline right? uh, uh, Nabuto from uh, the council. And Philippine National Bank, uh, represented by our, um, one of our MCAs, Manuel Arnaldo. We also have GBK Financials Incorporated. We have Hilton Toronto Suites getting a hole for us. A, mor a mortgage center, Mortgage Nights. We have Secure Channels also through Caroline. And uh, South Asian Canadian Health and Social Services, better known as SACS, through our uh, colleague uh, Iqbal Ali. And another one from the same, uh, you know, like uh, the South Asian community, we have the Tamil Nadu Multicultural Association of Canada supporting this event as well. And from our internal, don like World Vision donors, we have Pete 
first dental, I, you know, I emailed Neil, said, oh, Neil, how's the tooth fairy? <laughs> so, no, tooth deep first dental. And uh, we have Upcentrica. And also, we have exciting contests on that day. We have a hole-in-one contest, courtesy of Action Honda, represented by our uh, ambassador, Rafael Neves. Give him a round of applause. Rafael, give him a 2017 Civic Honda. You know, that is if you will be able to put in <laughs> one <Exactly>. shot. <laughs> and uh, we have uh, Philippine Airlines, who is on board, giving us a uh, ticket, a uh, round trip ticket. And an exciting one, a super fan experience, courtesy of Navbatya, giving away a uh, special NBA ticket. Uh, I think it's the closest, you know, like uh, to the players. Uh, I don't, I forgot how they call it, but uh, they said, yeah, courtside. <laughs> the only thing I know is when not say, oh, you can smell their sweat, you know. I don't know. <laughs> Anyways, uh, so uh, that's the uh, thing. And for the foursomes, I'm happy to announce that uh, we're almost sold out. But if you are still really, you know, interested to join, just approach me or Rich, and we'll be happy to accommodate. But technically, we're the 32 spots, but we still have four to, to give away, so maximizing it to 36. So just jump on, uh, you know, talk to Rich and myself, and also um, Tommy Tam. And by the way, uh, Joe forgot to mention, Tommy is one of our ambassadors as well, and he's our co-chair for the golf tournament. Without Tommy, I don't think this will all be put together, so a big round of applause for Tommy. Hello,今天我們有一個很特別的活動 在我們現在身處的Angus 最重要的一件事就是當然我們籌款希望大家朋友得到我們的識腦之後通過偉大的出會界的朋友去幫我們宣傳一下更加支持我們的慈善的活動繼續比較好 Hey 可能來到加拿大一大段時間 其實我們在多倫多這個城市是一個國家都是鼓吹的多族裔的文化一個城市<笑> 
人嘅社區越嚟越壯大咧，就變咗淨係固步自封地咧參與我哋自己華人嘅誒、呃、組織嘅活動或者慈善活動。咁我哋應該要跳出嚟，因為我哋係呢度嘅移民，呢度嘅移民嘅文化嘅精神都係大家咁多個種族和諧地、呃、大家共存、互相幫助，去建立一個更加美好嘅國家或者城市嘅。咁我希望咧、呃、鼓勵大家我哋華人嘅、呃、社區嘅朋友咧、呃、做善事，亦都可以跳出個華人嘅圈子。去參與多啲主流性嘅活動，咁亦都可以涉獵多啲主流嘅文化，而更加強大我哋華人響誒呢個國家嘅誒平台。係，因為誒世界宣明會係一個國際性嘅組織啦，而加拿大世界宣明會亦都係即係喺誒主流方面咧一個好有誒歷史嘅機構。咁所以如果我哋人能夠透過佢哋搞嘅活動，係俾主流知道，同埋亦都係俾我哋多元族裔嘅其他社區嚇，即係可能係日本啊或者其他嘅社區認識我哋嘅話咧。咁都會係一件好事，咁希望大家會鼎力支持。六月二十三號，記住嚟參與我哋嘅誒慈善比誒慈善高球比賽啦，同埋我哋嘅晚宴嘅比賽，今日見你，到時見。